Mount 101, everything you need to know to hold, keep and attack from what is meant to be one of the most dominant positions in BJJ. Let's have a look. Hey guys, Professor Tom, I'm here with Reese. We're gonna have a look today at the mount. We're all told the mount is this great position, yet we often find when we get there, it's relatively unstable. Let's have a look at its pros and cons, but most importantly, what to do to get all of the upside with very limited downside. So, Reese is on his back, and I've somehow got to mount. Fantastic. Guys, in terms of getting to mount, obviously you want to be controlling the guy before you mount. Don't just try to get to mount and get your control that way. You want to have good controls on your partner. You want to open them up, control their hips, control their legs, and mount in a controlled fashion. It's not the topic of today's video. Mount it. So here I am, and mount. The number one error from mount is me taking my hips off of his hips like this with an upright posture. This is no good for my balance. As he starts tipping me off, I have this tremendous, like a big tree falling over. There's just tremendous momentum generated. So the first thing is, my head's gonna lower, okay? My hands will be out and wide on the mat, as opposed to up here. This is just good for punching, but even if I was punching, I wouldn't wanna be on the hips. His power base is his hips. So him pushing off the mat with his feet and jacking his hips up, that's what generates all of his power. So whether I was hitting in MMA, or I am controlling and trying to submit in BJJ, I still don't want to really be on those hips. So my head goes down and my hands go out, forward and out, 45 degree angles, as far as they go, okay? Now we look at the greatest error, number two, which is squeezing of the knees, okay? Do not squeeze your knees on your partner. Simply open your knees, and you can cross your toes underneath his butt, okay? So see how I've opened my knees and my toes are touching or crossing behind his butt. This is the position you wanna work from. As I widen out my knees, especially if I have a big partner, my hips are gonna compress on his hips. Knees go wide, hips go down, okay? The more flexible you are here, the more pressure you'll be able to generate but now we actually have to give pressure. So I can either take my hands and knees off the mat and that will give me my body weight's pressure. Or I can back up and now push through him at a 45 degree angle and then get my hands and knees off the mat. This is gonna make for a very strong, heavy, tight, stable mount. So we've got a couple of ways to add pressure. Now we need to look at variations of the mount. One of the most common variations of the mount that achieves a lot of control uh, outcomes is a, a grapevine or a leg laced mount. It has an obvious con, we'll look at that in a sec. So if I've got a partner here that's really spazzing out and maybe I've only got to keep the position enough to get points or 10 seconds left in a fight, I can interlace my feet with theirs and stretch out and now he's quite stuck. But understand, this is temporary at best for two reasons. One, I can't hit or submit very well from here, so ultimately if I wanna finish the fight, I'm gonna to have to relinquish this control. But secondly, there's an easy counter. He straightens his legs out in the direction and it's his leg pressed against my toes. He will get out every time, okay? So understand that there are cons to that. So now let's look at the second broad category of mount, high mount. Anytime I can open or lift his elbows, I can move my knees up. Fortunately, I can either try to overpower him simply by lifting, notice how I frame on the shoulder and I lift, or I can just attack his neck. So I go, here comes the cross choke, and he will defend his neck and my knees can go up. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so I'm keeping my toes in, but I'm bringing my knees up to his shoulder line. From this situation, in a self-defense or MMA situation, I can punch, okay? And as he bucks his hips, they're not directly under me, so I'm not affected as much as when I'm low and he can rah, really affect me. So if I'm punching, I could break my hand easily. So I go to attack the neck and now I slide my knees up. From this position, we can now move into what we call an S mount. 
Okay, this is an attacking mount. Watch what I do. I turn the corner and I hold on to his tricep. I now bring my foot out and around. And notice how I turn it on, like I'm tightening the lid of a Coke bottle. I'm turning around here. So I've got my legs, right foot facing upstream, left foot facing downstream. Okay, left knee facing upstream, right knee facing downstream. From this position, he is in a world of problems. The most obvious submission from here is to come under his wrist, lean to your right, and creep your left leg around. This is a tremendous arm bar, okay? Thumb facing up, knees squeezed. Again, let's have a look at that. I'm here, I attack his neck, I slide my knees up. I now hold on to his tricep, I stretch my leg out, and I tuck my calf in under his rear delt. I make sure I control the man's wrist and I lean to my right as my left leg comes around his head. I sit as close as possible, squeezing my knees. I have my arm bar thumb facing up. However, from the S mount position here, another great attack is the Americana this way. Okay, it's got to come on strong and relatively fast, so do it with control. But understand if you do it too slow and friendly, he'll get out, as most Americanas are that way. Very good attack, all right? If you're like the Gi, start having a constant in your mount so you start to direct where your partner can go. Right hand in the collar, okay? So now, which way is he probably gonna to try to roll me off? probably this way. So I'm ready for it. I'm leaning to this way when he goes to roll me. I slide my left knee up and now I slide my foot up. And now not only do I have the arm already controlled for the arm bar, okay, but if he clamps his elbows down because he's tired of getting arm barred by you now, my left hand comes into his collar and I have my cross choke right here. If he starts grabbing at my hands to defend, well, I'll switch straight back to that arm bar. Or, of course, the Americana on that side. So there you have it, guys. One of the beauties of mount is when it goes wrong, you're still okay. So this is not true for side control, for instance. So in mount, normally, if someone escapes, they're gonna do it by two mechanisms. The first one is an upa or a bridge and roll. So they are gonna roll you onto your back. But if you are in full mount, they are in your closed guard. This is a tremendous thing. This is like a danger zone for them. So it has a, ba a backup layer of protection on it. The second cool thing about mount is if they put you in half guard, you're at least still on the top. And if you're on the top, especially in an MMA environment, you can hit a lot harder. But even in a jiu-jitsu environment, you have gravity working against them. Okay, so there you go guys, do get to mount. Don't be one of those people that goes through as a white belt or a blue belt not getting to mount because you feel side control is superior. You're rewarded four points in most competitions for mount for a reason. Practice getting there, get your points, get your mount, get your submissions. There's mount 101 guys, catch you next time.